Hello, welcome to today's session. Today we will be talking about sequence completion and analogies in nonverbal reasoning. In the last class, we have already talked about finding missing figures and odd man out in nonverbal series. So let's start with some of the practical applications for sequence completion in nonverbal series. So when we talk about sequence completion in nonverbal series, we basically have a figure. Based on that figure, we have to uh, answer the remaining questions. So let's see here. Here you have A to L that is given in the figure. Okay. And then you have a question that's based on it. So you have to find the values of 1 and 2. Okay. So if I just try to convert here, I can say this is B. Okay. This is C. This is E. Okay. Then you have uh, this is a small circle that's G. Okay, so we can say this is one way of depicting it. So we can either translate in, it into the alphabets and then see what can be the answer. Or a different way is we can uh, see what is the figure that is coming up. So in this case, we see there is an empty circle and a square which is intervened by a circle and a triangle. So empty circle and a square intervened by circle and a triangle. Empty circle and a square intervened by circle and a triangle. Okay. So here should be a circle. So one should be a circle. And then you have two that should be a square. So here the sequence is basically circle. Then you have a square. Then next again you have circle and triangle. So that is the sequence that follows. Circle, square, circle, triangle. So one should be a circle and two should be a square. Now try to match the options here. If we say choice A, it's A and D. That's a circle and a triangle. So that should not be the answer. Then you have triangle and a circle in B. That should not be the answer. Then in C you have D, e, D and F. So you have a black circle and a square and in D you have an empty circle and a square. Okay, so here we can say since it's an empty circle with every case, so all of these circles are empty circle, so it should be an empty circle. So the correct option here would be G and H. Okay, so this is a kind of sequence completion that we try to understand in non-verbal reasoning. Now let's move on to a similar example. We'll practice few of these questions and then we'll move on to the next question. So <clears throat> in this question, let's start with here. So you have to find again 1 and 2. So we have a square on either side of a triangle. So you have a triangle here and on both the sides of the triangle there is a square. So you have a triangle and you have two squares here. So you have a triangle with two squares on the side. Okay. That is one thing and another is one is blank and one is empty. So one square is black. So this square should be an empty square. Okay. And again this should be a square. Okay, so one should be an empty square, so F, okay, so wherever it's F, it should be the answer, H is not present, so H cannot be the answer, uh, so H is not present, so only option is F, which is an empty square, so that is C, so you have an empty square and a square at 2 again, because on both sides of the triangle, you have a square, so you have a triangle here. And that's surrounded by a square on both sides. You have a triangle here surrounded by a square on both sides. You have a triangle here surrounded by a square on both sides. And of all these squares, one is an empty square. Okay. So the correct answer would be C, that is F and B. So this square would be an empty square and this square would be a black square. Here is the next question. So here you have A till R. Okay. And here is the sequence. 
again in this sequence you have to find out 1 and 2 the values of 1 and 2 so as we can see here what is happening is you have a triangle a square and circle okay so each circle is preceded by a square and followed by a triangle okay and each circle is followed by two triangles so there are two things that is important in the series you have a circle on one side of the circle there should be a square and on the other side of the circle there should be a triangle and every circle is followed by two triangles okay so that is the complete equation so you must have a square circle triangle triangle then again square circle triangle triangle so if we start with triangle square circle triangle then one should be again triangle okay and then you have triangle then again square circle triangle triangle square circle triangle so two should be again triangle so one should be triangle and two should be triangle that is the complete equation here so both one and two should be triangle so the only option in which both one and two are triangle is a that is k and a so both k and a are triangle here so that's the correct option so here we can see uh, the sequence is square circle triangle triangle then again square circle then you have triangle triangle so what is important here you must try to understand a pattern what is uh, being followed it's not necessary that the same time of square triangle or circle is repeated okay it's not necessary that the same type of square circle or triangle is repeated the variety of square circle and triangle can change the only condition that we need to look upon here is uh, either it's an empty square circle or triangle or it's a kind of black or filled square circle or triangle that's the only condition that we have looked out so far now these were some of the questions that we have discussed on sequence completion. Now let's move on further with some more examples that we can talk about in sequence completion. So you have this again a similar example. So <clears throat> in this what you are trying to do is you are trying to see a triplet. So you start with 1 and 2. So these are the two things that you have to find. In this series as we can see there is a triplet followed by a, a pair arrangement. So the triplet is triangle, circle and square. So you have one should be triangle. So you have triangle, circle and square followed by a pair of circle and square. So you have triangle, circle, square, then you have circle and square, then again triangle, circle, square, circle and square, triangle, circle and two should be a square. Then you again have uh, circle and square and then again triangle, circle, square and then again circle and square. This should be the sequence. So one should be triangle and two should be a square. So in this case if we see E is a triangle okay, and F is a square. So 1 fits in, then you have E is a triangle and uh, D is a circle, so B cannot be the option. Then you have uh, square and a circle, so this cannot be the option. And C is again a circle and a circle, so this cannot be the option. So the only correct option here is choice A, which says it's a triangle and a square. So what we have to find out is basically the pattern as we talked about previously. Now let's move on to the next question that is understanding the analogies. What does analogies mean? Analogies means if I say this figure is to this figure, based on this I can find that this figure would be equivalent to which figure. So based on the relationship between these two figures, I have to depict the relationship between this and the next figure 
So if I observe these two figures closely, I can say these two circles moved on this side and these three circles moved on, moved on this side. That means it's a kind of mirror image. So if I try to convert a mirror image of this, what would it become? These two circles will remain as it, this circle should move here and these two will move on to the two opposite direction. So the only option here can be D. So this question is a question on analogy where based on one relationship between one and two, I have to find out relation between three and four. Okay. So here is the concept and this particular question is based on the concept of mirror image. So that is one kind of method to find the analogy. Now let's, next move on, let's move on to the next question. If I say these three figures is to this figure, then similarly I can say these three figures will be equal to which of the following figures. Now in these three figures, if I see this line and this line, there are two images in which this line is common. So only uh, whatever is common in two images will be replicated. Okay, so you have this line and this line. So this comes out here. Okay, this line is common in all three. So it won't be taken into account. Only the lines which are common in two of those. So then you have this line and this line that is common. So that goes replicated here. Okay, so this is <coughs> the correct answer here. Now, similarly based on this concept that what is common in two images would be replicated, we will try to understand this problem. So in this problem we can see that horizontal line is there in two of those. So horizontal line should be replicated. So B should be the answer or D should be the answer. Okay. Then we say that this line is present in two of those. Okay. So this line should be replicated. So this line is only present in D. So the correct answer should be D. Now if I say this line which is going from uh, top to bottom. okay, This line is present in all of these three. So it is ignored. So this cannot be the answer. So the only correct choice here is D. Okay. So this is one way of uh, doing a question on analogies. So just to repeat what we did. We are basically trying to see the number of lines that are common in any two of this image and that finally goes on as replication into the final image. So when we are trying to solve the question on analogies, it's very important that we understand this concept in detail. Okay. And we try to apply as much possibilities as we can to understand this question. Now this question is a bit tricky question. But a kind of simple question. It looks tricky, but it's basically a simple question. So here what you are trying to do is, you have two images and that is similar to this image. Okay. And then you are based on that, you are trying to understand or find what would these two images look like. So when I'm saying these two images look like this, that means I'm transferring circle to a plus sign. So here there is a plus sign. So this plus sign should be transferred to a circle. That is the first important thing. Now all the four choices have circle. So let's think about something else. So you have circle, circle. So this becomes plus, plus. This circle becomes plus and this circle becomes plus. So if we add all these circles, they become plus here. Okay. So now what we are doing is similarly, we'll add all these plus here and convert them into circle. So if I have this diagram, I will have circle, circle here. So two circles. I'll have a circle here. Then I'll have a circle here. And I'll have a circle here. So this should be the correct option. Now among all of these, C looks similar to what I have drawn. So C should be the correct answer or C is the correct answer here. So this looks a bit complicated. Oh, there are so much diagrams. What to do? But basically, this is a very simple concept that you are just changing the sign from circle to plus in first case. So in the second case, you would be changing the sign from plus to circle. That is one thing. Now, wherever there are circles, all circles 
are replaced as plus signs. So all plus signs will be replaced as circles. That's the only thing you have to do in this question. Okay. Now, in this question, this is a kind of uh, question which requires a bit of uh, logic. You have five pieces that are given. Okay. Now you have to see these five pieces and arrange them in such a fashion that they form perfect square. Okay. Now, let's understand which of the following will have a different shape. Okay, so if I see E here, if I substitute E here, it forms a perfect square, uh, it fits in. Then A, then you have D and you have B. So the shape of B is exactly what looks like here. The shape of D is a triangle here. Okay, now in the case B, you have B as a triangle. So this looks incorrect. Okay. The shape of E, A and C looks correct. Then you have D, B, A and C that looks correct. And again you have E, A, uh, then you have D and C that looks correct. So here B is not a triangle. So here the only incorrect option is B. All of the remaining three are correct choices except B because B is not a triangle. And here in the question it says B as a triangle. So which of the following cannot form a... Uh, so all of these three can form a perfect square except the choice B where B is shown as a triangle but in actual in reality it is a quadrilateral. So that's the next kind of question that is usually asked in uh, non-verbal reasoning. And now we will discuss one of the final questions in non-verbal reasoning. Here what we have to basically do is find the total number of lines. Now if we look at this diagram integrately, uh, this diagram looks much more complicated. It seems there are so many lines that are there. Now let's start counting these lines or I will redraw these lines. So this is the first line. Okay. This is the second line. This is the third line then I have the fourth line okay this is the fifth line then I have something that goes out in this fashion so six then you have seven you have eight you have nine ten eleven and the final line that is twelve Okay, so I guess now the figure looks exactly the same. Okay, so the correct answer here is 12. Now, how can we solve these kinds of questions? The best, question, the best way is to redraw. Because if I start counting one, I might get confused. But if I am drawing a similar figure and counting simultaneously, this is one, this is two, this is three, there is much higher probability that I would be doing it correctly. And when I stopped here with 12, I could see exactly the same image as it was here. So there was no other line left that I could have drawn. But seeing this figure, a lot of students get confused because they feel that these are either two lines or there are different lines that are coming up here. But they are in actuality, uh, in reality, one line that is being cut at several places. So it seems that there are a lot many number of lines as uh, as it exists okay so it's very important to have a kind of keen focus on what you are understanding and what you are deciphering here so this was the section where we talked about uh, sequence completion and analogies in nonverbal reasoning we'll be taking two dimensional and three dimensional example and the concept of dice in the next session so have a good day ahead